Okay. All right. I, this is Blending Modes. Well, first of all, I'm Debbie Aquino. Um, and this is Blending Modes. It's one of my favorite classes to teach, if you weren't on earlier. Um, it's one of the things that you can do to your images that are really, it's really easy and can have dramatic effects. So I, I've been looking forward to doing this too. So first I'm going to explain to you how they work and then I'm going to give you some examples of how they work. So here we have, let me close a few things here. And I do want this. All right, so I have an extra layer up here over on my layers panel. Um, and it has three colors on it. I have 50% gray, 100% black, and 100% white. And this is how the blending modes work. First of all, the blending modes live over here in your layers palette. Um, if you click on where it says normal, you get the drop down menu of all the different uh, layer, uh, layer blending modes. Now these blending modes, they live lots of places. You will use them the most in uh, the layers panel, but they live in lots of places. They live with brushes. They live uh, in uh, layer styles. They live in a lot of different places. So I'll point them out to you as we go, but we'll start here. So if you look at this menu, you notice it's broken into different uh, degree or different categories, really. This first one is called the darken group. Everything in this will darken. So as you, you notice as I, as I slide over it, if you look at the graphic, you'll notice that over on the right where the white is, well, what this group does is it ignores white and it makes things darker. So if you look at those three lines, the white one you cannot see at all. The black one, it, it uh, will just make that dark on dark. Um, as you scroll through them, you can see how it ignores the white in the image below it. It's always the image below it that this works on. Uh, while I'm here on color burn, I want you to notice that anytime you see the word burn in Photoshop, it usually means it's going to introduce some red into whatever you're doing. So color burn here introduced red into this, linear burn, less red. Uh, and then we have our darker color. Notice that when it's on darker color, the gray over here, because it ignores white, it's ignoring 50% of the gray and you're seeing 50, the 50% that's left. Um, so that's the darker group. The, the next, oh, and the one you'll use the most will be multiply. That's the one you'll probably use the most. The second group is called lighten. Everything in this group lightens things um, and it ignores black and makes things lighter. So the one I use the most, you'll probably use the most is screen. And you can see as I scroll through them, how that changes. It's pretty cool. You can, and especially when you start working with textures, these become very fun. The next group is called the contrast group. Um, what it does is it ignores gray and it increases contrast and saturation. Uh, the one, actually there's two you will use. You'll use overlay and soft light probably the most, but even with overlay, you can see how the white is changed and you can see how the soft light changes that differently. Uh, and then we have, of course, hard light, vivid, linear, all these fun things. This is the contrast group. You'll probably use it the least. Um, it produces uh, pretty exotic effects, uh, but it can be fun. And then bottom group is the color group. Uh, now, one thing about this is it would be really tedious to go through these one by one and, and say, well, it might be that one, it might be that one. Well, I wonder what that one looks like. Um, there's a shortcut key to cycle through these. Uh, really helpful. The trick to it is that you must have the move tool selected. So you select your move tool, hold down your shift key, and press the plus key. Now, if you watch this uh, title bar right here, as I press the plus key, see how that moves? And I can actually go through these really quickly because you know we like we know it when we see it, and this allows us to see the different options available to us, and and kind of cycle through them. 
really quickly. Also, the minus takes you backwards. So shift minus takes you backwards. Shift plus takes you forward. Um, but yeah, you need to have uh, the move tool selected. Otherwise, it won't work. All right. So let me show you what, what fun we can have with this. So I'm going to go back to this picture of the cello. I'm going to do control or control or command J to duplicate the layer. Um, and then I want to bring in some images. I already have this open, this tree open. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say select all or control A and I get the marching ants around the edge. That tells me I selected it. And then I'm going to do edit, copy, or control C, or control or command C, and then I'm going to go back to my cello, and I'm going to do edit paste, and it just drops it in. Now in a perfect world, we like to have our images the same size, but it isn't always a perfect world. It depends on what you're going to do with this image. It depends on how much it's going to pixelate and how much that pixelation will la matter when you increase the size. But we're not going to worry about it today. So I'm going to transform this image. I'm going to go to Edit, Free Transform. And when I drag from a corner, Photoshop will keep it proportional for me. So I'm just going to make it the size of my image. Understand that when you do this, you are literally stretching the pixel data apart. So it will pixelate. Don't don't think just because you have high resolution in your lower images, it will adjust. It, it will adjust, but it, it's not going to be pretty. I'm going to go ahead and press my commit key or my return key to commit that. Um, and now, anytime you paste into Photoshop, it will automatically add a layer. And I want to make sure that this layer is above my cello. And now I'm going to cycle through the blending modes. I'm going to hold my shift key down press my plus key, and you can see how it can start to get very cool. I actually am going to stop its screen, um, but you can kind of see, I'm going to cycle through all of them just to show you, you know, you can get some really cool effects. So I'm, go I'm getting back to screen. Um, also notice you can control the opacity of that layer too. Even though that blending mode affects the whole layer, if it's kind of blowing you away and like, and this one's a little strong, uh, I'm going to just bring it down just a little bit. So you can make that effect not so in your face by using your opacity as well as your blending mode. Okay, now I want to add a color layer. I want to select my background layer. I'm going to go down here. And I want to, ch to choose uh, the adjustment layer icon for color. I'm going to say solid color. Oh, no, I'm going to say gradient. And I'm going to choose a gradient. When you bring up the gradient picker, you have all the gradients you've always had, but they have all these new gradients here, uh, and they've separated them into color groups. Um, I'm going to choose something, I think I'll choose something in the blues. Okay, and I'm going to add one more image. I'm going to add the wispy fog. Um, actually, this image looks like this, but I couldn't see it, so I added a layer at the bottom just so I could see what, what I'm looking at. Another way you can move your layers from one file to another, besides copy and paste, is if I go over here to my layer and I hold down my layer, uh, hold down my mouse on my layer, I can drag it over to the title bar up here and it's supposed to shift to that image. Okay, it's not going to do it. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll do select all, um, edit copy, and that's command or control C. Go back to my cello. 
Um, and I want to add my fog above my background layer. That's good. So I'll say edit paste. And the problem here is that these two layers have uh, effects on them. Oh. Uh, this layer has an effect on it, and this layer, ha uh, but I want to be able to see um, my wispy fog down here. So what I want to do is I want to take these two layers and select them, hold my shift key down, select them. And now I'm going to go over up here to the hamburger menu, up here on the top, and I'm going to say new group from layers. I'm just going to say okay. But I want you to notice what happens up here in the uh, blending mode uh, menu is this becomes a pass through. So now I can control my original background layer and my original um, tree layer at, separately from the wispy fog down here. Okay, where's my fog? One second. Oh, here we go. So while I've got my group selected, I can go ahead and change. If I don't want it, if uh, I want my wispy fog to be seen, I say stay with the pass through. Or I can start using my blending modes again to do different things. So this is just kind of quick on what you can do. Now, there we go. I'm starting to see my fog. I've got my cello and I've got my color coming through the back. Any questions so far? It's pretty, pretty easy stuff, but it's very fun. All right. Uh, there's no questions. I'm going to go ahead and close these. And now this is one of the more basic things you can do with blending modes. So here we have an image that's uh, overexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that with Command or Control J. And I'm going to change that to screen. So there's before and there's after. So it really helps a lot. Now I'm going to take this layer one and I'm going to do Command J again and it lightens up my image again. And I'm going to do it again, and again, and again. And now I have one, two, three, four, five layers of the same image, all with screen. Um, and it's really lightened up my image. Now, the trade-off for all of that is all that noise that you see in this image. Um, so, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on how important the image is on whether or not you're going to use something like this. Something um, you can also do is many times when you've got a file that's got lots of layers in it, there are times when you would like to have all those layers as one image, but you don't want to create a smart object and you don't want to merge them. Um, I want to show you another what I call trick little trick here. So I'm going to select this top layer. I'm going to select all but my background layer. And then the shortcut, and uh, I only know how to do this with the shortcut. So you hold down the command or the control button, the option or the alt button, the shift key, and you press the letter E. And what it does is on the top, it creates a merged file of all the layers that you had selected. So now I could take this layer over into AI Clear and run it through for noise if I wanted to do that. Sometimes we want to do this so we can take it into Camera Raw and run, run it through Camera Raw and bring it back. So that's just a great little uh, shortcut if you want to do that. It's uh, like I said, for uh, Mac, it's Command, Option, Shift, E as in Edward. For Windows, it's Control, Alt, Shift, E as in Edward. Okay. All right, another one that's amazing. Oh, don't save. Amazing how well this works. So I'm going to do a Control-J. Obviously, um, if you've taken a class with me, or you've probably even seen this in one of my webinars, um, old picture, 
you know, been in the photo album or in the photo box for years and it's gotten kind of faded. So I've made a duplicate of this and I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. And it already got way better. Now I'm going to duplicate this again, uh, Command or Control J, and I'm going to change this blending mode to overlay. And now I've got something that's probably more realistic as to how this photo originally looked. Um, so we have before and after. Okay. Now this is one that you've seen a million times and you probably don't even know that you've seen it. Um, so what we want to do is we want to change the color of her leotard. Uh, so what we're going to do is I need to select the leotard. So because um, I knew this was coming, let's go up to select, say load selection because I pre-made this uh, selection and I'm going to say okay. And there is my leotard. Oops. I have a little flashing pixel there. Several little flashing pixels. Wow. Okay. All right. So I've got my leotard selected and I want to create a new layer. And I want to fill this with color. So I'm going to go over to the edit menu and I'm going to say fill. And from the fill men menu, I'm going to say color. And then from here, you just choose a color. Now, actually this color works for me. I like the purple. But if you want to get to a different area on the color wheel, you use this slider to slide down into the color that you want. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm good with the purple color. And then you actually choose the color from this box. And once you choose a color from here, it changes right here. So you can actually see it change, shows you what the old one was, what the new one is. I'm gonna say, okay. Move this over and then I'm, oh, and notice here, we have a blending mode. We could apply a blending mode from here. It doesn't give you as much control as it will over here, but you, ha you have the option. I'm going to say okay. And that looks like we just slapped color on top of it, doesn't it? But now, while I am on this layer, first I've deselected. Now I'm going to go back up to my blending mode, and this is where the colors come into play. I'm going to go down here and choose color. And what Photoshop does, it uses a blending mode to overlay the color onto this image. And we can still see all the texture and all the folds in the image, but we've laid this color, just this block of color on top of it. If you've ever gone to Amazon, you've looked at a shirt and that shirt's been there in red and blue and yellow and green. This is how they do it. They make it in different colors, use the same image, and they just have a different a layer for each different color. All right. So now I want to do some of the special effects stuff. This is where it gets really fun. This was just kind of to demonstrate, you know, some of the things you can do with this. Um, so I'm going to choose these two images. All right, um, now I'm not going to duplicate this because I'm going to, after I make a change to this, I'm going to copy the change and put it in the, the other document. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this change. Um, I want to go to adjust image, adjustments, threshold. And I want a black and white image. I'm going to play around with my slider here to see you know, you can decide how much detail you want. Do you want just her? Do you want some of the brick? How, how much of it do you want? I want 
uh, I'm going to say about 128, something like that. And I'm going to say, okay. Now I'm going to do select all, control or command A. And now I'm going to copy it, edit, copy or control or command C. And I'm going to go to my other image, which is this pretty little graphic. And I'm going to say edit, paste or control V. And now I'm going to change the blending mode to screen. Now that I have her at screen, I can be sure I'm on layer one, have my move tool selected. I can move this around and, and see how I can fit it into my graphic. Actually, I'd like for her to be a little bigger, so I'm going to go ahead and transform her. Um, while I'm on this layer, I'm going to do Command or Control T for free transform, and I get my bounding box. And then I'm just going to make that a little bigger. Now I can decide if I need to add a mask and what I want to, if there's any of this I want to mask out. Um, if there were big yellow pieces on her face, I would probably go back and mask out those, but I'm kind of liking the look of this right now. Um, so that was one blending mode, screen, with a black and white image. That's why understanding that with screen, um, it ignores black so I can get this cool little knockout look without going through a lot of pain. And, and Photoshop's good for causing us pain sometimes. Any questions? So I'm going to start with this and this. All right, so what I want to do is I want to paste her into the other image. So I'm going to do a select all, edit copy, go to my other image, edit paste or control or command V. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make this one bigger just because, ooh. I'm actually going to make her bigger still. I want her to fit the whole image. Okay. Now I'm going to go to image, adjustments, and desaturate. I want to take her down to a, a grayscale type of image. Now I'm going to do control J or command J to duplicate that. And I'll be on layer copy one. I just want to turn that off. I'm going to come back to it in a minute. And I want to go back to layer one. So on this layer one, I want it to look more sketchy, more like a sh shaded kind of sketch. So I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to choose blur and I'm going to choose surface blur. And because Photoshop is sticky, it remembers that I chose 15 and 15 before. Um, if you do before and after, let me, especially in her face here, you can see how it gets a much more shaded look to her, to the edges of everything. So I, I went ahead and went with 15. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to go back to layer one. And I'm going to duplicate this layer. And this, I'm going to change the blending mode to divide. And while I have this on divide, what I want to do is make this, again, more sketchy. So I'm going to go up to filter and I'm going to choose blur. And I'm going to choose Gaussian Blur. And now um, this, you start off here, you just start kind of moving that radius over uh, just a little bit at a time till you get the sketchy look that you want out of the image. And I'm getting pretty close. I think I'm at about 12. I'm going to say okay. 
and I'm going to change the blend mode to color burn. Oh, oh, whoop, I forgot one step. First, I need to merge these two layers. Then we'll change it to color burn. Much better, much better. All right, now I want to duplicate this. Control J, Control or Command J. It, I find it hysterical. I'm saying Control J and I'm working on a Mac. So um, I'm going to change this blending mode to linear burn because I, like I like the reds that are coming out of that. I like the way it's uh, sitting on top of it. Um, and now I'm going to go back down here to layer one, turn the visibility back on. And I'm going to change this blend mode to soft light. All right. Now I'm going to go to my background layer. And I'm going to do Command-J to duplicate the background layer. You know, I said the wrong thing. I'm going to click on layer one. And I need to do this before I move forward. I need, I'm going to layer one, and I'm going to choose a selection tool. Um, Any time you choose a selection tool, you get your select subject uh, button. And that's what I want. I want to select my subject. Ooh, that's pretty. Now I want to click on my background layer and I want to choose my mask icon. Now last but not least, I want to add a background behind this because I don't really want this gray to show through. So I'm going to go down here to my adjustment layer icon and I'm going to choose gradient. And I'm going to go find a color. Um, let's see. Well, yeah, I'm going to choose something like that just for now. And then I'm going to put this. Oop, okay. Behind, at the bottom of my image so that it becomes my background. And now I've got my little mask with the tree inside and the light and all my other layers. All of these were just built with different blending modes. So you could get some really cool effects. Um, one other thing I would like to do here is maybe add a texture in between. I know textures are really hot right now. So that's a texture thing that would, uh, that would work. Any questions? Okay, a couple more. And I need this one. Now, I don't know how many of you are using vector art. Um, I like to bring in vector art from time to time, depending on what it is, to, to add fun stuff to my images. One thing about vector art is if you double click on it, it tries to open in a different program that's not Photoshop. So to get vector art to open in Photoshop, you have to actually be inside Photoshop, go to File, and say Open, and then go navigate to those files. Um, I know which two I want. It's a Adobe Illustrator file called Music Notes. And then I have one more called Burst. And I'm going to go ahead and say Open. And then what Photoshop does with vector images, vector images are resolution independent, unlike bitmap images that we all deal with. So what Photoshop will do, will, it will allow you to make it any size you want to make it. So if you know you need it, to be 15 feet wide, it'll let you make it 15 feet wide if it's vector. Um, I'm just going to say okay for these. They don't matter to me, but just be aware that you can do it that way. 
I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Say OK again. Um, Photoshop will also bring in your vectors without a background. So this was great. It brought in these notes without a background, so I don't have to do that. If I go and look at my burst, it was a full background, so it's good. So this is all good. I'm in good shape here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to bring all those elements into this and make a fun little flyer with this. So first I'm going to go get my texture, and I'm going to do Select All and Edit Copy or Command or Control C and Edit Paste. Now, a lot of times when you bring in an image and it's way bigger than your photograph, um, we need to transform it. Uh, so a trick for that, so you can see it, first of all, I would do Command or Control T to uh, bring up my free transform. And in this case, I can see this uh, handle and this handle, but I can't see the bottom. If you press Command or Control minus, you can reduce your screen size to the point where you can actually see the handles on your transformation, and then you can control it. Uh, you can control it. You can see what to do so you can control it. Now, mine wants to stay um, proportional. I don't want it to be proportional, so I'm going to hold down my shift key and move my graphic up. There we go. Commit my transformation and I'm going to change this to darken. Ooh, he looks better already. I forgot to make a background copy. I'm going to go back and do Control J, make the quick background copy. Okay. Now I want to bring in this uh, starburst. So again, I go to the image, select all, Control or Command A, edit copy, Control or Command C, and go back to the original image and do Edit, Paste, or Control, or Command V. Again, I want to transform it. And, and, I, and this is a little different. So I'm going to do Control T. Uh, I'm going to put my cursor here, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I want it, I know I want that this portion of the circle to cover his face. But as I make this bigger, I, I lose some of that. So um, I'm just going to play with it a bit for a minute. I'm going to change this blending mode to linear burn. And now I'm going to get my uh, move tool again, and I'm going to move that so that I kind of have to play with my transformation tool and, and kind of move it around till I get it where I want it. And I know it covers his face right now, but I'm just trying to get, in, get it kind of in position over here. And then I'm going to commit my transformation. We're at linear burn, so we're good. Uh, one more. I want to bring in the musical notes. So again, select all, Command or Control A, Edit Copy. Go back to your original image and choose Edit, Paste, or Control V. Once more, I need to uh, transform this. So I'm going to do Control T. Whoa. There we go. And I, li I like these. I like them big like this. Um, so, and, and once you've got it sized back to the size of your image, you even though you have not committed this transformation, you can still press Command-0 to fit in window. And that way, you can get in and see what you're doing. Um, when you're bringing in an image that has transparent areas, if I try to click over here, it's not going to allow me to move the image. I need to click on the black part. Um, so I want to move this down, and I know that's kind of in his face a little bit, but I'm kind of okay. I like the way the curve comes down and comes back and kind of points right at his face. So I'm going to commit that transformation, and I'm going to change this blending mode to overlay. I thought I did something more dramatic than overlay. All right, I'll say with overlay. Now, I want to get, whoops, I want to get 
all this stuff off his face. So I need to add a mask to each one of these. So I'm going to start with layer one and I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm gonna go get my brush. I wanna make sure that my foreground is black so that I'm painting with black because black conceals. And I wanna go over to my brushes over here and I wanna choose a soft round brush. Now, I'm also going to reduce the opacity of my brush to about 48%. That kind of slows down how quickly it erases and I'm hoping I won't overdo it. Um, so I'm just gonna start to erase over his face. And I can, when I let go, I can see over here that it, I'm painting in the mask, so I know I'm doing the right thing. Again, even though my opacity is at 48%, I can still you know, erase everything. I just have to go over it more. Because this is slow, I'm going to move it up. But truly, when I'm doing this kind of work, especially when I'm doing client work, I, I tend to really reduce my brush size. All right. So now let's get rid of the uh, burst over his face. I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to make sure there's a double line around the mask. Use my same brush. Still got black. Now I can start to, now see this is where, see how when I erase with a 100% opacity, see how it really, it's just too intense. I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna go back to my 50% opacity. Much better. That way I can keep some of that, that look without getting rid of all of it. I don't, I don't like these stripes too on his neck, too much on his neck. I like the yellow color look, but I'm not wild about the, uh, the stripes. And then last but not least, our uh, notes up here on top. I'm gonna add a layer mask and I'm going to cover the notes. These I want gone over his face, so I just want it to lead to his face. I don't want it to cover his face. And what happens as you go is, as I start to get rid of the uh, notes on his face, I realize I've still got some uh, yellow on his face that I, I want to get rid of. It's a little intense in places. Better. And if you decide you don't like this right away, you can go back and you can change any of these to play with, see how they look. Ooh. Hmm, I kind of like that one better. I, this one too, we've got a linear burn. Color burn might be better. So you're not restricted with one look. You can do these over and over, change them over and over. You would have to save this file as a PSD or a TIFF in order for these to be uh, editable at a later date. All right, I have one more, everybody in? All right, um, actually, some of you have seen this one before. It's my little boxer curl. All right, so I need a couple of need this and this. Okay. So first we're gonna duplicate the background. Command, Control, J. So I want to make a selection of her. So I'm gonna go and get a selection tool and I'm going to click on the select subject icon. Um, select subject does this so much better than it used to. You can see it's picked up her hair. Um, one of the things I noticed when I was practicing this, um, which was actually kind of, whoops. Let's try again. Um, one thing I noticed, it really picked up the hair on her arms, which was not really my intent. It's kind of 
kind of icky there. Uh, so that's something I would normally work on <laughs> when I do this. Um, so first of all, I have her selected and I want to mask her. So I'm going to click on my mask. Now, in a real world, you would go through and you would clean up that hair on her arms. And there's some other, there's some other stuff over here. There's a little color over here. Um, I would go in and fix that in the real world. But for today, we're just going to do this. Um, I'm going to click on my background layer. And I want to add a color fill layer. So I'm going to go down to my adjustment layer icon. And I'm going to say solid color. And then again, I'm just going to pick a color. I'm going to choose something probably in the greens. Ooh, I want it more green. Now, one thing with the color adjustment color dialog box, once you set your color in this part of the box, watch what happens when I move the slider. I can, it will actually go through and show you the different colors. So, so while you're deciding, you can see all the options available to you. Ooh. Um, I think I'm going to go with a, uh, I think I'm going to go blue. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to go get th this texture. I'm going to select all, edit, copy, command or control C. Go back to my image of my boxer girl and say edit, paste, or control B. Now I'm going to use my free transform, control T, to edit my background here. I want, and I'm going to hold down my shift key because I don't want this to be proportional. I just want to cover everything and then commit my transformation. And I'm going to change this to hard light. Now I'm going to go and get my marquee tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out a marquee selection around her. What I want to do is kind of make this look like a cutout. Um, so I want her shoulder over here, I want it out, and I want her elbow out, I want part of her arm, so I'm going to say right about here. Mm, yeah. Okay, that'll work. Now I'm going to go get my other texture, my grunge texture. And I'm going to do select all and copy, edit copy. I'm going to go back to my image. Now notice I have a selection in place. This time I want to do edit, paste special, paste into. So what I'm telling Photoshop is I want you to paste that texture or that image into this selection. And when I do that, what Photoshop does is it, it does that. It pastes that texture into a selection. Over here on your layers panel, if you look over to the right, um, you have a mask and that mask covers everything that was not selected. These two are not linked together. They do not move together. What that means is when I click on my uh, texture and with my move tool, I can move that texture around in that space. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun, but I'm going to undo that. Um, but this is going to give us, um, give us the ability to create the effect we're about to create. Uh, and this one, you, if you want to add a blending mode to this, you could. We could cycle through the blending modes. You could, ooh, actually, I kind of like that one. <laughs> you never know. Uh, but you could cycle through them and see if there was one 
that you liked. I actually do. Oh, Vivid Light's not bad either. You can tell I like the reds. Linear Light, another one. Ooh, that kind of fits with the theme. So you get the gist. You can play with them now or you can play with them later. I'm going to go back to, um, yeah, Linear Burn. And now what we want to do um, is bring up the layer styles. We haven't talked about these yet, but I knew we were going to run out of time today. So I, I'm just going to tease you with, um, with this. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a stroke around this that just kind of sets everything apart. It also makes it look like a frame. Um, so we have something down here at the bottom called effects. I never use this uh, panel. What I use instead is if you're on the layer over here underneath where the word is, if you double click it, it will bring up the layer styles dialog box. Um, like I said, I wanted to do a whole nother webinar on this. It is more fun. Um, layer styles can be applied to a shape, any kind of shape, any kind of letter, any kind of text. Um, this is considered a shape, this box, it, but it can't be applied to a whole image. Um, to choose one of these different things, um, like I want the stroke, you would think that if I should check mark this box, it will demonstrate the stroke for me. But what happens is this center portion should change. Every time you click on one of these, they're kind of like layers and this center portion changes. So if I don't actually click on it and I just check mark the box, it does not change. Be aware of that. Drives me crazy. I've complained to Adobe many times. Here we are. So I have the stroke here and in here you have all the attributes of the stroke. Um, you can change the size. Notice how it changes. It's live, so it's fun. Um, here is the position. Inside is the only one that will produce a sharp corner. If you choose outside, you get a rounded corner. If you choose center, you get a rounded corner. But if you choose inside, you get a square corner. Um, so you can set that. Um, you can notice we have blending modes here. You can change the blending mode just for the stroke from inside this box. So we can change it to hard light or, or anything else. Lighten. You can control the opacity if you wish. You can also choose the fill type, whether it is color, whether it is a gradient, or whether it's a pattern. If you want a gradient, whoop, you can go down to all your different gradient styles. So there's plenty of options here. When you're happy with whatever your selections are, you just click OK and they show up underneath and they have eyeballs next to them. You can turn them on and off. Oh, apparently I turned on bevel and just stroke. So light, layer styles, another webinar, very fun. But here's the thing, down here on the bottom, I want her looking like she's coming out of this instead of standing in front of it. So here's what we have to do. We have to modify this mask. So I want to zoom in here on the bottom where I can see, and I'm going to go and get my uh, rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to line it up here with her waist or, and with the frame and just select all of that. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I can certainly see it. See how I am off about a pixel right there? Your arrow keys will allow you to move that. If you press your arrow keys up, down, sideways, they will allow you to move that. So that allowed me to move my selection down without using the mouse and, and moving it around all over the place. So, so I have my selection here, that's good. I'm gonna go back up to my boxer girl and I'm going to click on the mask. So now that I have the mask selected, I have the area of the mask where we can see her waist and I want to fill this with black. So let's go to edit, fill, fill with black and say, okay. Now I can deselect 
and it looks like she's coming right out of there. And that, my friends, is blending modes in a nutshell.